Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and yes, I'm here with Spellbinders again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we are going to be making two cards today, and these cards are going to be featuring the Beautiful Sentiment Vignette by Becca Feacon. So for those of you that don't know, Becca Feacon, which I, I'm not sure there's many of you out there, but she has created this 3D vignette line. So it, it's just got these, these folds in it and you've got these panels that come up and it just expands. Um, some of them stand upright and you can pull tabs out to show photos or notes um, or these beautiful florals that come out of it. Um, the beautiful sleigh, that was absolutely gorgeous. Um, so she's really taken the concept of this vignette and has really expanded it. So this is just another way to expand it. So we're going to focus on two projects. All right. So let's talk about the two products that I'll be using. So this one here is called Birthday Wishes Vignette. Now, we're not going to be making any vignettes today, all right? So this is just the front panel. This will correspond with the grand vaulted cabinet. So if you should have that, this will fit onto that. Now, if I'm not mistaken, and oh, I hope I say this right, um, I believe that the grand vaulted cabinet, not only can it make a vignette, but it's also part of the mini album that she came out with, which is super cool. Um, so many things and a lot of her dyes are now interacting with each other. And they have been for some time. So just in case you didn't know that, I'm letting you know. This does have four dyes. So you have the outline. You have the beautiful flourish pattern that fits right in. So you can either just take this cut this out of your cardstock this will fit on a five by seven panel you will need that unless or else you will cut these ends off if you just want the out, outer base you can do that um, by setting this in there and getting that lined up you get this beautiful flourish pattern with this solid piece in if you want that solid piece cut out just put that piece inside as well and cut these all at once and you'll just have this floral piece on the out, outer edge. This here, you can take this piece, cut that solid, <clears throat> and then also place this one inside, and this will say birthday wishes um, in a beautiful, beautiful flourish pattern as well. So you have multiple ways of cutting this die um, panel, and that's how we're going to use it today. I will be making a five, and a, a five by seven card with this, and I'm also gonna make a standard A2 size, four and a quarter by five and a half. I almost had to think about that. The other set that we're going to be pulling in, of course, it is florals. Um, she comes up with great designs when it comes to her florals. They layer um, when you can add that dimension or you can keep them single. You can put pearls on them. She has uh, this line called Cinch and Go. So if you just search in Spellbinders, cinch and go you will see all these beautiful floral sets that she has created and she has great videos to show you how to put those flowers together to make them look real i kid you not um but they are absolutely gorgeous so we are going to play around with these as well now again this is called petite floral potpourri all right, and there's 10 cutting dies in this set and four cutting dies in this. So as always, I'm going to switch over. This is something new that I'm doing. I just find it's easier. Um, so now we're going to switch over to the voiceover and let's start making our cards. As always, I have taken care of all the die cutting um, offline so that we don't have to watch that. So we are just ready to build our piece of art. So if you have something on your table, by all means, grab it and let's start building. Okay, so let's get started into our projects. Now, when it comes to the two cards, not only are we making the two cards, 
but I'm actually going to show you two different ways on doing some things throughout these projects. So kind of cool. Okay. So the first thing I did was I used the outline die for the large, uh, let's call it the flourish panel. And I cut three of those. I love dimension, um, especially when it comes to a die like this you have this solid piece that can rise it off of your card panel. Now this one is going to make a five by seven card base. Um, and make sure you check Spellbinders. They do have a card essentials section. I'll make sure I link it down below where they have card bases available, um, gemstones and all these wonderful things for our card making um, to make them pretty and to make things easier because that's what I'm about but there's times where I make projects that are not. So let's get back to this. Now, after I had those three layers put together, I cut two of these flourish pieces. Now, you are not seeing things. I flipped it. So I've got this piece of gold going up in the back. I've got a, a droopy piece coming down on the bottom. And the reason why I did that is when I set the die. So when you look at the die, you have your flourish piece in the center. We center it with the outer border. I took that center floral and pushed it up into the corner. I pushed it up into the left hand top corner. So it was not going to be centered. I cut that twice, one in the ivory and one in the gold mirror cardstock, and that is the Spellbinders mirror cardstock. Why did I do that? Because now all I have to do is line that up, and I'm going to get a shadow of the gold mirror cardstock. I think it's great that I also have, since I went upside down with it, I flipped them. I have these two beautiful panels coming up off the side of the top, and then that piece that dips down that curve on the top actually fills in perfectly one of the ovals at the base. Now, of course, I cover that up, but it does. It doesn't stick out. So again, play with your dies. Off shift them. So instead of cutting them perfectly and then having to off shift them when you glue them together, they can still line up flat and you still get that shadow. You can see as I was gabbing here trying to explain that, um, I cut die cut the sentiment the birthday wishes flourish three times layered that and I cut with the outline in the center and I used that to cut a piece of gold mirror card stock as well I'm using my double-sided foam squares to put that in the panel now we've set that aside and what I've grabbed are all of the flowers that I've cut now remember this is from the potpourri die set the floral potpourri um, now, what I did was I cut them out of ivory, which is the same color that I've been using for the flourish design. And then I used pink sand, which is a Spellbinders pink. It's a beautiful shade. And all I'm doing is I'm coming in with my rounded tool. Now, you could use a pen as long as it has a rounded tip. You don't want a flat end on your pen. As long as it's an oval shape, you can get these curves. And I'm just swirling in the center. I'm breaking down those fibers and that paper is going to automatically curl up. Now I was going to start gluing these and then I quick changed my mind. I grabbed two distress inks. I grabbed my uh, worn lipstick and aged mahogany. So the pink is going to get the um, aged mahogany. Now again, I'm really... I am not dipping too many times into the ink pad. I want this color to be soft, but I did just want a slight hint of color on the edges of these flowers because we're going to layer them. All right, you can layer them three times. You can layer them two times. Um, very few did I do a three layer. Most of them I did a two layer. Now you can also curl these up. I mean, there's just so many ways that you can put these flowers together. And if you want to check out all these ways, these are kind of in the line of the Becca Feekins, uh Cinch and Go. So it's C-I-N-C-H-N-G-O. Um, and she shows beautiful ways to put her flowers together. And they look real. 
or they look like real dried flowers. It, they're absolutely gorgeous. So I, nine out of 10, when I'm taking the flowers, now that I have them all inked, I like to use glue dots for my layers for the most part. It's quick, it's easy. Um, it just makes it a lot faster. So I keep all the glue dots on the strip. These are the micro zots um, that are out there. And I'm putting my base down onto the zot and it's holding it in place. And then I'm coming in with the next layer putting that down onto a dot and I'm picking that up and putting it down onto the next layer. I can then just cut apart those pieces of paper they're sitting on. And now I can have fun just playing, laying down all of my flowers into place. And this is gonna be a huge bloom coming off the bottom of this. I wanted the pink to just be a pop of color, but a soft pop. You can see in that upper left-hand corner there, um, I die cut the leaves in the ivory cardstock and the gold mirror cardstock. So again, it'll really pull out those colors. Now, if you look at that flourish, it looks like it's got a deep shadow because of all the layers that we put. Some of it, is the shadow, but a lot of that is that offset that I did, but it's even all the way around. So it's just a different way to play with your dies. Now that I have all my flowers set in place, I'm now going to start putting in the gold pieces. I don't want to overdo the gold, not that you can't have too much, um, but I just want to keep adding just a little bit to see what that's going to do and I eventually I stick with all of the gold to be the leaves. Um, I just think it really breaks up the images and lets these flowers really really stand out. I start out with the long vines um, because they're going to take up most of the estate on here, most of the room. And I wanted to make sure that I came up along the side. Now I usually do this in a little bit of a, um, an uneven state, um, but it's slightly uneven. So, because it, again, it adds movement. You know, when we, now again, if you do what I call the matchy matchy, what we do on the left, we must do on the right it still creates a beautiful card. Absolutely not saying that it doesn't. For me, I like the, the differences, the one side higher or that flow of flowers coming off to the one side. It's like when we add our die cuts onto the top and then we trim the sides. So it's like we're cutting off that die cut. It adds movement. Just by doing that, you add movement because it gives you the illusion that, hey, this is a snapshot of what I'm seeing, but there's more on the outer part. We just don't see it. I hope that makes sense and I don't sound crazy. I'm just saying. But that's what this kind of does. By me, that's what I get when I make it uneven on each side or going down into one corner. To me, that adds movement so I don't have to cut things sometimes. Because there are a lot of times where I do like elements hanging off my cards. I think it adds interest. It adds a texture. And that's why I go to larger envelopes for all of my cards. I never use a standard A2 size envelope um, for my standard A2 size cards. I go up one size. And I believe it is It's an A6. I, I'll try to remember to put the size. I know in other videos I, I give the size and all of that. But I do. I go to a larger envelope. Let's go into our next card. So for this one, we're not going to have too much dimension. So instead of cutting the sentiment plate three times, let's just cut it once. Let's put it on that background. And I used the Recollections craft paper because I, I'm a fan of that craft paper. It's like a, a paper bag. And then I'm putting this on a piece of Desert Storm. Now, I'm real quick setting that in place approximately, and I'm putting some marks. All of my flowers have already been put together the same way that I did before. That didn't change. 
and all and I pulled out all of the ivory leaves that I had left so I'm using those four marks on this card front panel now this is just the panel this will go on to a standard a2 size card base and I'm setting these leaves into place so what we're going to create behind this is like a wreath and then this that sentiment is going to sit right on top now you could have set your sentiment propped it up which I will do I will use double-sided um, foam squares to prop this up but instead of cutting the leaves and, and doing all that I just wanted to get these placed so it's creating the spray of those long leaves in a circular panel but I don't want it to be a complete circle I want one area to be heavier I want one area to be lighter um, again creating that movement and but it gives you the illusion it's just moving in a circle if we have them even I feel okay if we put them very evenly spaced it kind of doesn't give you that movement you're just looking at it they've been placed down um, this way it looks like the wind is turning them if that makes sense okay so I've put my double-sided foam squares and now that's the dimension that we're gonna have for that so you don't have to cut your die cut images three four five times um, you can just do it once and still get that texture so this time instead of using the glue dots I am going to use my barely art glue so you can use a glue you want a quick uh, a quick grab type glue so art glitter glue this barely art glue is great as well and what I'm doing is I put a little bit on a piece of scrap paper so that I can just take my tweezers um, these are the reverse tweezers by Spellbinders great point um, on them and I'm just dipping into the glue and then I'm just setting them up underneath and I'm pushing down on that panel so that the glue can can grab onto it and again not making these evenly spaced grouping them together some are going to have a couple some are going to have just one setting them in different angles again create that movement create that illusion and that's pretty much what we're doing so here are our flowers that we have I don't have as many and what I did here instead of rolling them or breaking those fibers first I glued them together and I used liquid glue and now I'm coming in again whether it's a metal ball or the end of a pen now I'm curling them I'm gonna use glue on the underside and just set them down because you're using a liquid adhesive it is my go-to um, you can do so much you can put a lot on there so that it'll get down there and that bridge will be formed with the liquid adhesive um, if you have a whoops moment you know oh that's not right you have time to rip this off um, and you're gonna see that when I go to put the panel down onto my card base yeah it was awesome not sure what I was thinking I didn't do my normal movements and it just went um, so again I'm just putting those pieces down keeping the dimension that we've created with them now this will flatten out when you put it in an envelope so cards like these two these are cards that I would hand to somebody um, or if they go in the envelope they don't go through the mail um, because the mail system will flatten them I have found a new love with the Nouveau dream drops because they act like no other Nouveau drop um, I've actually had these for a while and they were beautiful from the and I mean a while they were beautiful when they came out so um, yeah falling in love with those and I just added a hint of gold with those so here I am I've got my standard a2 size card base four and a quarter by five and a half I usually go from the top to the bottom nope this side for some reason I questioned if I was putting my card on the right way um, even though I did check it before um, so I was able to real quick take that off now you got to still move a little quicker because it will grab so I hope you enjoyed the two projects that we made today again two different approaches two different looks two different ways of adhering and die cutting so again kind of showed you all kinds of different ways 
that you can put your cards together that are easy for you or you, and what you're comfortable with or maybe with the supplies that you already have. So again, I hope you enjoy. As always, all the products that I used in today's video will be linked down below. I will try to remember those other things that I made mention of. If I forget, let me know down in the comments. And if you have a question, please make sure that's down there as well. And I will make sure I get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, I'm going to have that link down below for a free virtual event. I will definitely link to that video in the corner. Let's get ready for Christmas in July. It's wonderful. Everybody enjoy, smile. Um, have fun with this. Don't stress. But remember what's always most important to me. Always. Be creative, guys. And until next time, take care.